And this is the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show. It has taken all of 80 games. And now the Rangers officially know where they will stand when the playoffs begin early next week. Second place in the Metropolitan Division is theirs. They will play either the Pittsburgh Penguins or the Washington Capitals in the first round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. And the Rangers will have home ice advantage. Meanwhile, the Hurricanes, a team record, wins and points. They are the Metro Division champions by virtue of the fourth three win tonight on Garden Ice. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios. John Gianone, Henrik Lundqvist, Steve Valiquette. 4-3, the final Rangers with a spirited comeback in the final six and a half minutes. But a game I think maybe, Hank, more than anything else that they can take from it is there was a level of playoff intensity, whistle to whistle, and then some for a lot of this. I game. like this hockey game. It had a little bit of everything, uh, skill, physicality, Emotions, uh, a lot of this we're gonna see next week. This was a great test for the Rangers. Uh, Carolina Hurricanes, great team, very well balanced. The young kid in goal stepped up, played mm. really well, but it was a good game. Mm -hmm. Looking at it as the last week before the playoffs, not a ton to play for, uh, but it was an opportunity for this team to work on a lot of different things. Let's just hope now that the Rangers will be healthy in a couple yeah. of days. A couple yeah. of big names had to leave the game, but uh, overall, I, I thought it was a great hockey game. It was. There was a lot of intensity. You want that. I don't think you want to play meaningless minutes coming down the stretch. You want them to be important. You also want them to be safe. Uh, my takeaway is that the Rangers aren't going to back down from anybody physically. It's going to get very tight. It's going to be very gritty in the playoffs. They're prepared for it. I mean, they're going to match up well against anybody. I think it's very difficult to be a player and not look ahead right now because you're imagining a dream scenario where you play against the team that you want to play against. And some of the players may want to play against Pittsburgh. Some of the players may want Washington. And uh, look, if it's Carolina, it's going to be another round away. But that'll be fine, too. I mean, I think the Rangers can play with anybody, and I don't think they're afraid of anybody. Yeah, and remember, the Rangers have tomorrow night at the Garden against the oh, the Montreal Canadiens, then Friday at the Garden against the Washington Capitals. Then the playoffs begin early next week, either Monday or Tuesday, at Madison Square Garden. Nothing official yet, but what is official is that MSG Networks will carry all games of the first round. Sam Rosen, Joe Micheletti will have the call of all the games. We will be here to cover it all with extensive pre- and post-game coverage. Something else to remember from tonight, and something Chris Cryer will remember for the rest of his life, is that he was named by the fans the recipient of this year's Stephen McDonald Extra Effort Award given away for the last 35 seasons to the Ranger who best exemplifies going above and beyond the call of duty. Officer McDonald's wife Patty, his son Connor in attendance tonight, and Chris Kreider then went out and scored the Rangers' first goal. Now has 52 this season. He ties Adam Graves for the second most productive goal-scoring season in the history of the New York Rangers, topped only by Yaramir Yager's 54 back in 05-06. It has been another worldly offensive season for Chris Kreider, and Stevie did it again tonight. I, I thought he had a very persistent game. He was very driven in this game. He wanted to lead by example. I thought he did all of those things. He added the physical element when he had to, and he had a lot of scoring opportunities. I thought the team, especially when they were on the power play early, were looking for him. Now you can see him in his spots here where he's getting a little bit of help here on a pinch from Truba. Now they get on the power play because of that. And watch where Kreider is. You see him right there in front of the net. This is a play right here where it could have been delivered hard to his stick for a shot pass. The Rangers move the puck around, but get it to him a little bit shortly thereafter. It's just a little soft. If it's harder, he can deflect it, but it was delivered from Panarin soft. So he's at the net and digging away. And look, there was a lot of physicality after each whistle. Stays in the game here. Another chance in front. Didn't squeeze that between the blocker side arm and the body. And then Vetrano sends him in on the breakaway. He finishes that one. That's his fourth breakaway goal of the season. He's had 12 of them. So he is on par with NHL average. But he's getting it done. And look, he's uh, an emotional guy. He plays a lot of enthusiasm. I thought he brought everything that really required this game to what, have a What pulse. a great pass by Vetrano there. Yeah. To one hand it. And it, it couldn't be too soft or too hard. It was just perfect for Chris to come in full speed and, and kind of freeze the goalie a little bit and just walk around his leg there. It, it was a perfect play. And a, 
it could have ended up being nothing, but that play with one hand by Vitrano was very skilled. So a player in Chris Kreider, whose career high was 28 goals before this season, now has 52. Worth noting the Rangers played the second half of this game without two-thirds of their second line. Andrew Kopp and Artemi Panarin both left about midway through the game, did not return the rest of the game. We'll find out shortly if we do from head coach Gerard Gallant in his press conference any update on those two players. But with less than seven minutes remaining, a seemingly very comfortable 4-1 lead for the Hurricanes became 4-3 from a team with 26 come from behind wins this year. Steve, they almost did it again. There you go. I mean, they started something, and they just need a little more time to finish it. They were right there, a shot away late in the game. But once again, I felt that Truba stepped in once again on the point and got the puck through. That's all you have to do in the playoffs is get it through. This is a very playoff-looking goal that goes off Jesper Faust. And look, it starts something, but you can see that it's not regular season, meaningful game as much. I don't think the emotion was there at that moment as high as it could have been. And Lafreniere scores. It's, it's almost where you know how it is, guys. You're in the garbage time a little bit, and then you get close. But it wasn't to be as far as, you know, maybe it wasn't the most meaningful game of the year, and maybe they needed a little bit more. But I think that... What happened there, last six minutes, that's such a huge part in the playoffs, the momentum swings. Mm -hmm. If you can handle the ups and the downs, and, and hockey, it's just amazing how it can change from one shift to the next, when it, it's a hit, or a, in this case, a goal. Everything changes, the, the energy on both sides kind of switch, and, and that momentum swing is so important in the playoffs because the building is usually a little more intense and loud and the players get going and sometimes as a player you kind of you get carried away sometimes good and bad and you, I think the key especially when you play on the road not to get carried away when the fans are against you at home you use that as energy and, and get going but very important part of playing in the playoffs and have success in the playoffs is to handle the momentum swings. And you know what I think about a lot too, Hank, is you don't know when those moments are gonna happen. No. You can't have a casual moment. You let your guard down for one second and it changes the whole series. So I think that keeping your focus through those moments is gonna be the biggest thing for a lot of the younger guys not going through it before. I think yeah. it's one of those things where you don't know what moment could change the entire series. Every shift is the biggest shift of the playoffs. A big thing is awareness. Understanding the game, where you're at as a team and when you have the momentum against you, it's important that everybody on the ice understands it and play a simple game. Get the pucks out, get them deep. And when you have it, you got to step on that and just keep going and make sure that you get the opponents out there too long and get the top players out there to create the big chances. Yeah. But momentum... Extremely important. Mm -hmm. Starting next week. Voice of experience. He knows. And again, remember, starting next week in the playoffs, MSG Networks will have coverage of all the games in the first round, extensive pre- and post-game coverage. Sam and Joe will have the call of each game in round one of the Stanley Cup playoffs.